early trigger is uh, not uh, enough sleep. So uh, sleep is very crucial. Clarice tells herself this, this all the time. So I know that I need to work on this too. But when you are actually in your menopausal years, it gets exasperated. I mean, it, it like, again, it goes like crazy if you don't get enough sleep. So uh, lack of sleep uh, increases cortisol. We already talked about this lack of sleep messes with your uh, hunger signals ghrelin and leptin and so you actually uh, crave more sugary things and and all of that because you lack sleep it causes more inflammation in your body okay and like i said you already have inflammation in your body just the fact of the changing hormones and so if you lack sleep this is going to make it worse right um so kind of making sure you're really cautious of this uh sleep disorders do contribute to this i know a few of you that i've talked to do struggle with sleep disorders like ap a sleep apnea so sleep apnea is if you uh you know stop breathing in the middle of the night and kind of kind of you just don't intake enough oxygen throughout the night uh however you know just recently i found out you know just chatting with um some of you and like you know the prescription from doctors and stuff like that is you're more likely to develop sleep apnea if you don't actually and have not regularly worked out in your life because as you age the muscle tone in your body starts to drop and one of the reasons people have sleep apnea is actually because the uh, muscles drop in and they collapse as you're sleeping and you actually need to maintain good body tone and muscle tone in your body to ensure you have better quality of sleep so that is something to keep in mind because um if you haven't worked out much in your life and you really struggle with having good sleep you know actually learning to build good tone in your body can actually help you with better quality of sleep so um, so the other thing I wanted to talk about is the chicken and egg thing. So, so we know lack of sleep contributes to higher body, uh, belly fat and cortisol and all of that. But, um, the other thing too, is once like the, the belly fat on the other side, like it's like, if you have hot, more belly fat, you also have more trouble sleeping. So it kind of like, again, the vicious circle it, because the, the more belly fat is, it, it disrupts sleep and it has is a lot to do with visceral fat and like the toxins that it releases and all of that so it's like that vicious circle of if you sleep don't sleep well you deposit more fat you have more visceral fat that also interrupts your sleep so you really want to bring down the visceral fat as much as possible to have better quality of sleep right so how many of you struggle with sleep put below do you struggle with lack of sleep because if you do that's probably one of the I would say like it it just doesn't help you it doesn't help if you already again if you already don't eat well or you don't do certain things plus you don't sleep well it just makes everything worse right so put below uh like you struggle with sleep um if you're like you know that's contributing to belly fat okay now we're gonna talk about number 10 now so number number 10 is kind of already mentioned it but it's of course, one of the top contributors of belly fat because of all these lifestyle things is when you have your menopause and your hormones change, just like I said at the very beginning, right? Because the drop in estrogen causes more deposit in the midsection, right? So let's talk a little bit about being in menopause or being in sort of this stage of life, right? So Karen, you don't sleep sleep too much, hey? Definitely watching that sleep will really help you, uh, Karen. And decreasing stress. I don't know if you have a lot of stress, uh, Karen. And Devona, yes, I don't sleep well. Yeah, Devona, and that's a, I think it's a two-edged sword though. Like, because if you already have, a, so it's like you don't sleep well, so you have more visceral fat but the visceral fat also disrupts your sleep. So, so we're gonna really have to work on that. I know we're already gonna be chatting, right, Devona, on that, on bringing down the visceral fat. Now, let's talk about the menopause years, right? So as you age, you become, um, most people naturally are more sedentary just because like they have more responsibilities, they get higher positions in their job or the, whatnot, and they um, may, move less or work out less you know and uh and because of that as you age your your caloric needs or your energy expenditure needed changes so last last week i said it all comes down to energy 
energy balance, right? So your your as you hit into the menopause years, your energy balance needs may change because of the things that are shifting. Not only maybe you're more sedentary, maybe you're working a job where you're at a computer more, but also your muscle mass changes, right? We all know as you age, your muscle mass declines rapidly. So when your muscle mass declines rapidly, your caloric needs decline as well. Um, and and uh, a lot of people, like like I know a lot of women I've talked to, uh, maybe they don't know much about resistance training, so they just do cardio. And cardio, <laughs> too much cardio takes away your muscle mass. So a lot of factors can influence why the energy expenditure changed. And and so you may still eat sort of the same as before, but suddenly you're gaining belly fat. That's partly why is because there's so many factors happening in your body that's changing, but you haven't changed the energy uh, expenditure in and out. Um, but that doesn't mean, listen very carefully, that doesn't mean that you eat less, like eat really little, okay? So you, Cl Clarice is not saying don't eat because those of you who know me, I want you to eat. Uh, so don't suddenly like cut your calories down to like 500 calories or 800 calories, like something crazy like that. I'm just saying you may need to adjust a little bit uh, based on maybe your metabolism is kind of a little bit slowed down over the years with because you're getting older and you have menopause and things change in your body okay the other thing the next thing about being in menopause um is looking at your food right so um i said this earlier but if you're in menopause um and you don't watch your quality quantity and even your timing those three factors can have a massive impact on whether you have a big belly, no belly, middle belly, like where your belly is going to sit. So I always say to all my clients, I work on quality of food, quantity of food and timing of food is important. Um, and if you are struggling with a lot of belly, like fat, you know, and you don't understand that, that's something you want to maybe really learn for yourself. Because here's the thing is maybe you never understood it before you hit menopause. But right now, if you don't understand it, it's going to be a exaggerated effect. You know, you're going to gain belly fat faster. You're going to have more and more of a belly because that that all of that quality quantity matters.